I'm Julia Borston here with Kelly Campbell, the president of Peacock, to talk about Peacock's wild card NFL game, the records it sent, and what it all means for the NFL and for the future of streaming. Kelly, let's start off with this question of how did the wild card game come about on Peacock? This was obviously a big decision for Peacock. We have been on a pretty tremendous growth trajectory. We've talked a lot about taking big swings. We've taken a few. And when this opportunity came up, we you know, first looked at, does this map to our strategy as far as reaching new subscribers with the right content? And then of course, can we deliver? And you know, the early call went to the tech team and here we are now after the, the big wildcard weekend. And I'd say we delivered. It's been a really big moment for Peacock. So $110 million, that's the, the price tag on this investment. What were the metrics you were looking at to know whether it was going to be worthwhile? What, what did it come down to? This was all rooted in, do we have the team and the capability to deliver a flawless experience to consumers? So that was really the big bet that we took and, and we took it with confidence. And then we looked at, are we going to bring in enough subscribers and have the ability to keep them engaged and retain them as loyal subscribers after the game. We had a very aggressive forecast and we're really excited about the results. Did you meet the forecast, exceed it? I'd say we, we uh, did better than expected. So talk to us about these numbers. I mean, first of all, you had no problems with the streaming experience. Were there concerns about the technological <laughs> capabilities? I mean, just to have so many people stream something at once? Yes, I mean, when you think about it, I, I don't know that it was con concerns necessarily, but we were very cognizant of the importance of getting it right. When you're taking on something as big as an NFL wildcard wild playoff game, we know the fandom that exists around the NFL. We knew this was an opportunity for Peacock to build a deeper connection to consumers and to our partners. A partner like the NFL is not one that we take lightly. It was a massive undertaking and uh, and we're, we're really confident that it's paying off. So let's talk a little bit about, about the metrics that sort of the, were the measure of success. You reported 23 million viewers. Walk us through that number. Why is that number such a big deal? So this was the biggest day in streaming history. This was the most, the most live streamed event in history. Set a new record there. We also set a new record when it came to the number of concurrent devices at any one time on a live streamed event. And so, you know, this is meaningful for a number of reasons. It builds trust with partners and consumers, as I mentioned before, but it also puts Peacock's capabilities really front and center. And that's great timing as we lead into something as big as the Olympics, which are coming up this summer. Peacock will have the entire Olympics for the first time, every piece of live footage, every replay and everything in between. So we now know what Peacock is capable of and we're building that, that trust and relationship with consumers. And that's all you know, part of a, an overarching strategy to, to drive growth, which we've been continuing to do as the fastest growing streamer in the US. Um, and really to, to build a loyal, healthy subscriber base. Before we go into more what this means for Peacock, I want to hear a little bit more about the game itself. You made the decision to not have ads in the most exciting end of the game. What was that strategy? What were you thinking going into it and how did it turn out? A couple of things, you know, first of all, we were thinking about our consumers and what can we do to make this experience unique? It's already unique in that it's only being streamed. So this is the first wildcard playoff game that was exclusively available on streaming. So we thought about how can we differentiate this and make it a unique experience for consumers. And then of course, for, from an advertising perspective, you know, how can we also make it a unique experience for our advertising partners? And so we are really leading into both of those when we made that decision. And so a commercial free fourth quarter, was that risky? Did you feel like you were giving up a huge amount of very valuable ad revenue? We felt pretty confident from it from the beginning with that. Um, and that really comes down to, you know, our conviction in the business that we have both on the subscriber and the advertising side and the deep relationships with we, that we have with the advertisers who uh, participated in the game. With this game, you had the innovation of not having ads in the fourth quarter, uh, but how do you see the opportunities in streaming enabling Peacock to do different things when it comes to live sports content? With this game, as you can imagine, we are very focused on delivering a flawless game. And I think we delivered on that front. We are continuing to innovate both in the consumer experience and in the advertising products that we offer. You'll see some of that in the consumer experience with features like catch up with key plays 
and we're developing more new features that are consumer facing, but will have sponsorable elements in the Olympics coming up this summer. So more to come there. You have not officially reported a number, but Antenna reported that there were 2.8 million new signups over the weekend tied to this wild card game. Can you tell us anything about customer acquisition, whether or not this was a successful investment in terms of customer acquisition? We're very pleased with our investment when it comes to customer acquisition. While I can't comment on the number, I will say, it was a meaningful amount of subscribers that came in for the game. Uh, that's what we hoped for. We have conviction in what Peacock has to offer. So for us, it was a really great opportunity to bring new subscribers in and then expose them to all that Peacock has. And we did this at a time where we had the opportunity to ensure that we have the right pipeline coming out of the game. So Ted launched the same weekend as the Wild Card Games. It's now our most watched original scripted series. We launched season two of Traders the same weekend. That's now our most watched unscripted original series. And we've got Oppenheimer coming up February 16th, Apple's Never Fall, Big Peacock original in March, and then of course, as we've talked about, the Olympics. So we are really focused right now on making sure that this new cohort of subscribers is experiencing all that Peacock has to offer in the content that we have. And how much of that is about making sure that people understand that Peacock is a place for sports? NFL, of course, being the most valuable sports content out there. So sports is a big part of our value proposition. We've really been a leader in the streaming space when it comes to sports. We had live sports on Peacock more than 300 days in 2023. So sports is certainly a meaningful part of the value proposition. But what we found is that people who come in for sports, they're watching entertainment content. And that's really where the opportunity is because we have not only the greatest sports offering, but a robust offering of everything from original series to films that come straight from theaters to a deep, deep library of content. And we find that our sports cohort viewers are watching on average, nine out of 10 of their hours are on entertainment content. So while people are coming in for sports, we're finding that they're also engaging with our entertainment content, which really sort of makes the model work. So you had these two NFL games this season. What's next? Will we see more playoff games that you're gonna be exclusively streaming on Peacock? So look, this was uh, first of its kind. And as we've talked about, we're really pleased with the performance. We're really very happy with the partnership with the NFL, very grateful for that partnership and, and hope to do more, more on that front. As part of the negotiation though, did you negotiate any future extension games, any other opportunities? Is there anything that's already in the works or that could be in the works for the next season? So when we look at next season with the NFL, we do have another exclusive game that will be only on Peacock similar to the game that we had regular season in December when the Bills played the Chargers. And when it comes to a potential wild card game, those conversations are happening. So it sounds like more potentially in the works. Um, to take a step back and look sort of the importance of the NFL for Peacock, you obviously have the Olympics, that's in the, in the NBC Universal DNA. But when you think about the NFL, what does that brand and those games mean for Peacock beyond just this wild card game? So look, the NFL, first and foremost, is extremely valuable just in the fandom that exists here in the US. And so to be able to tap into that and partner to bring these games to consumers, give them more options to watch these games across NBC and USA and Peacock, um, to be able to lean into the, the decades long partnership that NBC and the NFL have had, to lean into the production capabilities of NBC. It really is just such a, such a great fit for Peacock as we think about you know, where we've been and also where we're going, where consumer behavior is going, where streaming is going, and where Peacock's going really in partnership with the NFL. Now, what's so interesting is that, you know, obviously sports are often the highest rated content on TV, and then you have the NFL, which is the highest rated content on TV. And then this past year, we had the writers and actors strikes. It disrupted a lot of live programming, like the late night shows, and it disrupted a lot of scripted programming, um, like the fall TV lineup. Did the, the writers and actors strikes make the NFL even more valuable to Peacock? I think certainly having a robust sports offering was helpful to Peacock at a time when original content was, was really stalled or on hold. So no doubt, I think NFL and having that robust sports offering played a role. I also think just the depth and breadth of Peacock's library, when you look at you know the amount of content of really great, high quality, popular shows that Peacock has from The Office to you know every episode, ever made of shows like Park and, Parks and Recreation. We had this robust set of content to sort of lean into in concert with sports during that time frame. But I will say we're really excited about the original slate that we have coming up this year. 
And I think we're all very happy to be back in business when it comes to bringing that content forward. Yes, everyone is very happy to be back in business post strikes. When you look at your relationship with the NFL, I mean, obviously Peacock is doing something new. How would you describe them? Are they willing to experiment? Are they um, willing to take a chance? I mean, they're obviously a very old established industry that has made some really big changes in terms of distribution the past couple of years. Well, I think I think the game that we that we put on Peacock uh, is the best indicator that I see the NFL as partners who are willing to take a risk uh, and to lean into you know where consumer behavior is going and where we see the future going. They took a risk. We took a risk. We were we were very much in it together. Um, we had a number of partners across the ecosystem who are in it with us. But I I really I believe that they are they are leaning in to opportunities like this. Yeah, I mean, it's really interesting when you, you, you look at how much the NFL is the essential content on, on live television and how sports is so valuable for keeping the TV bundle together. What do you think the future of NFL streaming is going to look like? Do you think that we'll see more NFL games on platforms other than just Peacock? I, look, I I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know what the duration of the time frame will be of when, when that starts to happen more and more. I know that the the game that, you know, the exclusive game that we had on Peacock sort of raise the bar on what's possible. And I think that opens up a pathway to, to take more risks and do more experimentation and, and really look at, you know, other ways to bring this content to consumers, you know, especially as, as behavior is really starting to shift um, so much. Behavior is starting to shift. Are you talking about cord cutting, the shift to consumers to streaming? You were at Hulu before. You've been instrumental in the, this transformation of Peacock really into this major player in domestic streaming. Where do you see the whole streaming landscape going? So I'm talking about all of it. Yeah. I mean, when I look at um, you know everything that I see and I think that, that we look at as an industry is that consumer behavior is shifting towards streaming and towards video and towards other platforms. And that presents a unique opportunity for all of us to try and not just stay, you know, sort of caught up with consumers, but really to lead consumers. And I think as part of NBC Universal, we're we're uniquely positioned to do that. It's evident with our sports strategy and our ability to offer games across this broadcast cable and streaming ecosystem. And it's also evident in our entertainment content, both in how we um, partner, you know, on content that's that's airing on linear, but also in just leaning into the creative engines that sort of back NBC Universal and bringing, you know, new original content to Peacock. So, I look. I think streaming is the future. There's no doubt in that. I think leading consumers into that future is really about what are the what are the future innovations? Like, what can we do with the Olympics to to make the experience that much more unique and that much more personal in a streaming environment than it's ever been able to be uh, in linear? And then in terms of the risk of cord cutting, do you see the move of these big, big sporting events like the NFL shifting to streaming? Do you think that's going to make more people say, hey, I don't need to pay for the pay TV bundle anymore? I think with the NFL, people are going to continue to watch the games wherever they are. So I would expect to see a sort of continued mix of games available across linear and streaming. The NBA has a deal coming up. Do you think they're going to copy what the NFL does in terms of looking for all these different pockets of digital distribution? I would expect that they will. Yeah, very interesting. Curious what, you, what you're going to have there. Um, any predictions about the future of the streaming industry? I mean, you've touched on a lot, but I think your perspective, having come from Hulu, being at Peacock now, um, you know, we've seen the, this new focus on ad supported. What do you think that the characteristics are that are going to be sort of most essential for streaming going forward? I think we're going to continue to see this shift towards these dual revenue stream models. That was part of Peacock's DNA sort of early on, but this, you know, introduction of new entrants into the ad supported space to really support that ad revenue flow and that subscriber revenue flow. And I think we're going to see more live. And this has been an early pinnacle of Peacock's strategy in sports and also in live events in general. And I think that sort of convergence of on demand and live television is really going to start to happen more and more in a streaming environment. The NFL faced a certain amount of backlash for putting this wild card game, this playoff game, behind a paywall and not making it easy for everyone to watch like they traditionally have on broadcast TV. What's your response to that backlash? Do you think it was wor worthwhile? I do. Look, anytime you take a step that big or you disrupt the way that things have been done, you know, people are going to get upset. People don't generally love change. And I think we, we saw a decent amount of that with, with this move by the NFL and by Peacock. But ultimately, I think change is what sort of moves things forward and moves industries forward. And I think this is, you know, a step in the right direction. If we look back in sort of 
history, I think there was probably a similar outcry when the NFL put a game on ESPN. Now you sort of fast forward when broadcast and cable are expected, a streaming exclusive games not expected, but that was another move towards where the future is going. And I think that's a, a bold move that's worth taking. I have to ask because we were just looking at the ratings numbers on Amazon, which of course sort of led the way with this with the Thursday night games. Their Black Friday game did not perform particularly well. When you saw those numbers, was that concerning to you? I mean, obviously the Thursday night games had seen an uptick in ratings for the prior year. But when you saw the Black Friday numbers, did you say, oh, this could happen to us? Or, or how did you consider that sort of invention of a new game slot? We were watching very closely, so I think were we concerned probably a little bit. Um, at the same time, you know, the closer we got to the wild card game, and, and certainly when um, we got a sense of who were going to who was going to be participating in those games, we we had more conviction in our ability to deliver a big number. We were preparing for months and months and months, running you know simulations to see just what type of traffic we could sustain to deliver the highest quality experience. Taylor Swift, you got Taylor Swift. We got Taylor. <laughs>